थैंक यू चेयरपर्सन सो एक्चुअली आई एम एक्चुअली मिस फिट ओवर हियर आई केम हियर फॉर सम अदर रीजन टू प्रेजेंट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द एक्सीटर्स एंड वी सीज so that was i think it was yesterday and i came today because i came to know it just today so this is how it's a, it was a misfit uh, but i am very thankful to dr uh, sabu and uh, dr amit that they uh, fitted me because there was some i think deficiency in the one of the speakers so they fitted me over here uh, 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 i just thought about uh, at the last moment because i just came to know that i have to present uh, uh, right now so i thought what should i present uh, whether i should be presenting on the diabetic neuropathy neuropathic pain so i thought that it is again a uh, it's not feasible for me to discuss about the neuropathic pain in front of uh, diabetologists because who are, who all are managing the diabetic neuropathy also so there is no point of discussing the diabetic neuropathy here uh, so i took this opportunity and i thought that we let me just tell you about what is pain medicine uh, how 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 much we have progress in the uh, field of this pain medicine so uh, my this is my hospital ipsc this is a uh, first of its kind in all over asia uh, this is a pain specialty hospital uh, here we do end to end solution for the pain management uh, mainly my focus is on the spine and the joints so i'll be talking mostly about the spine uh, interventions so pain medicine as you all know that it is not a new specialty it's been there since last 5 4 5 decades now uh, isp international association study of pain which was formed in 1973 uh, wip world issue of pain it was formed in 1993 uh, indian society of uh, study of pain we came in 1986 and we have today we have around 3000 uh, members uh, what is new about the pain medicine in india that it, india is a first country Uh, all over the world which has given a, a super specialty status to the pain medicine now we had dm in pain medicine like you have dm in endocrinology so we also have this dm in pain medicine and uh, post uh, md fellowship programs by national board of examination so mitsi are the basic, uh, basically these are the procedures uh, minimally invasive procedures what we do for the uh, chronic pain for the spine joints and the neuropathic uh, kind of pain uh just to uh, give you idea about what actually what we do what is the advancement in the pain medicine uh if you look at this these mris you can see uh, in all the condition there is some pathology in the disc uh so whenever you talk about a disc problem the first thing which comes into the mind is the discectomy or the fixation that is the th first thing which comes into our mind but what we do as a interventional uh, pain specialist is that we identify the root cause of the pain so it is not that any com patient coming with a disc problem will remove the disc material from there so we have multiple pathologies in the spine it is not always the disc which is the cause of the pain in the back uh, in the spine uh, the most common is the discogenic pain the second is the facet arthropathy sacroiliitis myofascial pain syndrome so there are multiple causes of the back pain it is not always the disc disc prolapse as such is just 2 to 5% of the uh, spine patients so this is what we can do like uh, uh, you can see here there's a big tear in the annulus so disc is ruptured over here it is not bulging it is not protruded but it is ruptured over here so this is the most common cause of the disc pain or the spine pain or the chronic back pain these days in the younger population this is mainly because of the oversitting and the uh, uh, inactivities so these kind of disc ruptures we can repair them with a minimally invasive interventions like this this is called a bicoplasty or the percutaneous annuloplasty this is how we do it like this we can go and with the radio frequency techniques if you have a bulging disc like this if a hydration is good we can go for the ozonoclesis ozonoclesis basically helps in the shrinkage of the disc we don't have to remove the part of the disc we can just shrink it over there only this is another technique where we can use a decompressor it's a percutaneous decompressor where we can remove some part of the disc material from the center of the disc creating a space and we can reduce the pressure if you have a very large herniation compressing the disc or if it is extruded like this it has come out or if it is circuitous that is lying in the canal in those cases we have to target these fragments which are come out so for this we can do endoscopic discectomy so endoscopy is again a very minimally invasive uh, interventional procedure where we can go with the scope and we can remove the disc material from there so this is how we go with the scope this is uh, endoscope which goes inside this spine endoscope and we can remove the uh, nucleus material from the center of the disc so there are different kind of techniques i'll not go into the technical details i'll just show you some of the examples this is a very 
large extrusion over here, which is compressing the, almost compressing the no root over there. So this kind of furnishings, we can go with the fluoroscopy guidance. And then once we reach our target area under fluoroscopy, then we can put a uh, scope inside and then again we can remove the uh, nucleus material from there. So this is a through the scope, this is a grasper which I am holding this uh, uh, extruded material over there. So these, all these procedures we do under local anesthesia, we don't have to give GA or the spinal anesthesia for these patients. These patients can go back same day also. We normally do it in the daycare setting also. So I'll just show you this, how we can remove that uh, extruded material from there. And you can see that this complete, this material has come out, which is extruded over there. So the advantage of these procedures is that we don't have to remove the disc material from the center. We just target the fragment over there. So earlier what we used to do, we used to remove the disc material from there, we used to fix the spine. That is not required now in most of the cases of the disc extrusion. We just had to go with the, uh, you can look at this, there's an extrusion over here, and this is a post-operative case where we have just removed the extruded material from the disc. Spinal cord stimulator is one of the options which is available for the neuropathic pain. This is no normally what we are using for the failed back syndrome or the failed uh, surgery syndrome where we have done multiple pathologies and the patient has come with the neuropathic pain, uh, severe neuropathic pain as a last resort. In these cases, what we do is basically we put a, uh, a spinal cord, this is a pulse generator which is placed inside the body. Now these are the leads which are placed over the dorsal column into the epidural space and the patient has a control of uh, uh, over the pain of his or her own. So this basically pulse generator, this acts on the principle of the gate control theory. So uh, in, in India, it is not very commonly used for the diabetic neuropathic pain, but yes, in the UK and other countries, in the Western countries, people are using this spinal cord stimulator for the neuropathic pain also. Uh, in India, we are using it for mainly for the uh, failed back syndrome. So here, what is the advantage of this uh, is that we are not controlling the uh, diabetes or we are not controlling the neuropathy, but what we are converting is the neuropathic pain into the paresthesia kind of signals. So it, it basically acts on the principle of the gate control theory. Uh, definitely, we have a huge uh, potential for the neuropathic pain related to diabetes also. As we know that uh, diagnosing the neuropathic pain or the neuropathy in the, di in the diabetes is really very difficult in the early stages. Uh, whereas we, in the, once it is established, we cannot reverse it. It is very difficult to see that reversal happening. Yes, medical management, we can control the symptoms, we can, we may, we may slow the progression of the disease, but obviously the diabetic uh, control is the most important thing, which is important. But in failed cases where the medication management is not helping, in those cases we can go for these kind of uh, devices where we can put them uh, implant inside the body. So it's like a pacemaker for the spine only, uh, like what we use for the pacemaker for the heart. This is exactly the size of that pacemaker only. Uh, the beauty is that patient can control his or her pain. They have a remote control with them. They can switch it on anytime. They can switch it off anytime, or they can increase the current if they have more pain, and they can decrease the current if it is less. Uh, vertical augmentation is one of the procedure which we have seen in a lot of cases where uh, in a chronic diabetic patients who leads which leads to the osteoporosis and they land up into the osteoporotic compression fractures. So this is what we do nowadays with the uh, we don't have to fix these spines because fixing is a very big part challenge with these patients because they are already osteoporotic and putting the rods and screws inside the vertical body is really challenging. So in those cases, we can go with this uh, kind of vertebral augmentation procedure. Now you can see it's an osteopathic fracture. For this, earlier we used to do this kind of fixation, but this is not required because uh, we can go with just a small uh, uh, diameter uh, cannula over there, and we can just fix this. You can see there's a big uh, fragment, there's a big uh, cleft over there. So we can just fill those kind of cleft, and we can fix those spines. You can see there's a completely collapsed vertebra over here. This is again an osteoporotic compression fracture over here and how we can go and selectively do the targeted cementoplasty in these cases. So these kind of uh, osteoporotic fractures, they may come with the multiple fractures so at one level, two levels or three levels. We can do maximum at three level in, in one go. But if it is more than that, then we have to do it in a, uh, two stages. Uh, spinal pain, pain pump is again a very advanced uh, technology where we, this is this technology we are using mainly for the cancer pain patients. 
not uh, that useful for the neuropathic pain, but yes, definitely it is very good for the somatic kind of pains, uh, especially the cancer pain and the spasticity. In the patient who is having spasticity, we can fill these uh, pumps inside the body. So this is a pump uh, which we can be fitted inside the body. Now this is connected to the spinal into the thicker space. And uh, this is the catheter we put like this. We put a catheter inside. This is a catheter which is attached to the uh, spinal pain pumps and through this the medicine goes inside the uh, spinal canal. So this is how we fill the pump with the uh, drug. So these drugs are basically, it comes in the 30 to 40 ml capacity and we, what you require is just 0.25 ml of drug every day. So suppose if the patient is already on morphine, 300 milligram of morphine, we just require 0.5 milligram of morphine. So you can see the how much difference it makes uh, from 300 to 0.5 milligram. So they, because if we are directly delivering the drug directly into the thecal space. So this is the advantage of these kind of pumps. Obviously, these are not used for the neuropathic pain, but mainly for the somatic kind of pains. So again, this is fitted. This is a kind, kind of uh, pump we fit inside the body. And once it is fitted inside the body, uh, obviously, we cannot control it from outside. We have to refill it. We cannot, we don't have to take it out. So there is a sport over there. We have to just identify the, in the fluoroscope and we can just refill it after every three months or six months or uh, depending on the life expectancy of the patient. So the, all these interventional procedure, what I discussed, these are advanced procedure. We have multiple such interventional procedures available for the chronic pain patients, for the degenerative conditions of the spine, for the degenerative joint conditions like osteoarthritis or severe arthritis. In those cases, we have a lot of uh, plethora of the conditions uh, uh, where we can manage these patients with the minimally invasive interventions. We do have limitations. We do have contraindications. It is not that any patient coming to us, we can jump on the interventions. Uh, some limitations are there. There are some contraindications. Complications because these are the interventional procedures. Uh, we are not doing anything in non-invasive techniques. These are invasive techniques. So obviously they have some um, uh, complications which may happen, but almost obviously these are very, very, very safe as compared to the uh, open surgical uh, techniques. Not an alternative surgery where the, where the motor loss or something is there. In those cases, we have to go for the open surgical methods. So this is all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Sabu for giving this opportunity.